Hey everyone, it's Sol, and here is your guide to week 12 of Shadowlands. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for these weekly reminders and more videos, most of which are okay. First, some major hotfixes to be aware of. If you're tired of the tiny amount of anima that you get from raids and dungeons, you're in for a little treat, because now more of it will drop from dungeon and raid bosses. I have a feeling, though, that even if 10 times the anima were to drop, people wouldn't be satisfied and would rather see more gear, but it's definitely better than nothing, and maybe we'll hear more to address this during BlizzCon Line on February 19th and 20th. And that wraps the obligatory plug. If you've been deep into the mission table game, you may have noticed that at some point, you no longer saw missions that awarded bonus experience. By now, that should have returned, so enjoy! I should point out that there are missions you can run that award boatloads of XP even if you were to fail the mission. Venture Plan is an add-on that I use to identify these easily, and a link to download it is in the video description. The difference between those and the experience missions is that the experience missions have a much lower anima cost and duration. You just need to make sure that you can actually complete them. In either case, being able to choose the way that you want to run missions and get experience is a welcome sight. Now let's get to what's going on this week. Oranominos, the ever-branching, is your world boss. It's over in Ardenweald, and for you druids, hunters, and mageses, hop on right over so you can get your legendary memory. And for everyone else, you can maybe get your item level 200 conduit. Two holiday events are running this week, the Lunar Festival and the Love is in the Air. For you hardcore WoW vets, there isn't anything new in the Lunar Festival this year except for those in the Venther Covenant who at least acknowledge the event. For everyone else, you'll see quest givers scattered about who will encourage you to travel throughout Azeroth to collect coins from NPCs, which can be used to buy some fun cosmetic swag. The Love is in the Air event is, for most players, the time to get on as many eligible alts as possible, which I'm guessing is a level 50 character, please correct me in the comments just in case, and queue up for a quick excursion into Shadowfang Keep. Defeat a short encounter for some goodies, and a chance to get one of the most elusive mounts in WoW, the Love Rocket. There's also a ton of stuff to do, including daily quests, collecting charms for goodies, and more. The next Torghast special event makes its debut this week, called the Chorus of Dead Souls. Now, this one's a trip, and I'm gonna go off what I remember from testing, but here's how it works. At the start of your Torghast climb, you can choose a power that lets you transform into a Dead Soul Chorus, replacing your abilities with its own. This thing is pretty darn powerful, and lets you roam the halls, unleashing some crazy attacks. Additional anima powers will drop to make your Dead Soul Chorus even stronger and tougher too. If you're in a group, members can kind of hop on or merge with you or something, and you move and attack as one like a chorus. Haha, <laughs> get it? No, you probably don't, but this is a good chance to clear higher layers of Torghast if you have alts that might be struggling. This was my favorite out of the events because your class, spec, and role don't really matter at all, and I hope it lives up to my own self-hype. As a reminder, these events only work in the Torghast cell blocks and not the Twisting Corridors. Pet battles are the weekly event this week, nice and straightforward. Just as a reminder, there are pet battle dungeons to clear if you have not already. Completing those scores you some bragging rights and of course, more pets like a toaster dog. A toaster dog. Off to Mythic Plus. So last week was fortified, inspiring, and storming. I just want to say that as my first time tanking through storming in this expansion, well, I'm glad that's over with. Let's see what we have this coming week. We have a Tyrannical, Bursting, and Explosive. Fuck. Oh heck, so kill them too fast and Bursting might kill you. Kill them too slowly or pull too much at once and Explosives will overwhelm you. One bit of solace is that in Shadowlands, Bursting is dispellable, which makes Mass Dispel or similar effects very powerful. Otherwise, at least the affixes seem to hate everyone equally. In the world of Covenants, we hit some more big milestones. The maximum Renown was raised to 32. Renown 31 will unlock the final Soulbind upgrade for the third Soulbind you've required. It's kind of weird to skip the second, I know, but Renown 32 will upgrade your Soul Keeper and complete another version of your Covenant Transmog set. You just need to spend Anima to actually buy it. 
Once you hit 32 in the following week, your quest to save souls from the mall will go up one final time from 15 to 20 souls. Trivializing the income of redeemed souls that you get, unless you're like me and you're pushing for that final upgrade of your activity. I'm basically gonna wait three weeks and not probably amass way too much anima in the meantime. Let's circle back to the soul binds, because all four this week will have three traits to choose from, providing some reasonable torment, because you really want to go for that potency slot attached to them, but you may think twice. Starting with Mechanicos, Soul Steel Clamps reduce stun and incapacitate durations by 30% if you stand still for 5 seconds. I don't know about you, but while this does not stack with the equivalent PvP trinket, for me this is like it's like the perfect trait for guarding flags and battlegrounds because I'm I'm really lazy. Hammer of Genesis gives me up to 15% haste for 10 seconds every time I damage an enemy for the first time. It's not bad for PvP or ad fights, but this could be pretty monstrous opening up on packs and Mythic Plus. The Sparkling Drift Globe Core stuns enemies when you're at low health. It lasts for 3 seconds and occurs once every 45 seconds. I think this one will be pretty useful for situations where you're getting slapped around consistently. Boneslift Hermir of the Necrolords offers his arsenal. Gore Stompers gives a speed buff when you heal or hurt a target below 35% and has a cooldown of 1 minute. Yeah. So how about Marrow Gemstone? It raises your crit strike chance by a devastating 18% for 10 seconds after landing 10 critical strikes. The small rub is that you can only gain one of these stacks every 5 seconds at minimum, so it's a little hard to control this trait on a pull. The bigger rub though is that after this proc goes off, you get a debuff called Dull Gemstone, which prevents the stacking of crits for 50 seconds, making this ability have more like a 2 minute cooldown than a 1 minute and it's still pretty hard to control. Still though, it's a pretty strong pick. The third choice is Ravenous Pendant, which restores life every 6 seconds but can stack, making this moderately useful in dungeons. Let's check out Karain of the Night Fae Covenant. Face Your Foes is a straight debuff applied to enemies that you face. Pretty straightforward tanking trait. First Strike gives you a 25% crit strike buff for 5 seconds when you hit a target before it hits you. Now this can be pretty crazy with some precision targeting. Imagine if you're fighting a pack with mobs or an encounter with adds. Hit one target, get the buff, and then unload a few abilities on your primary target, rinse and repeat. I'm not sure if there's a cooldown like Hermir's Gemstone, so this is going to need a little bit more testing. Hold the Line is straight defense from physical and white damage if you stand still for 5 seconds, but it wears off when you move. But man, this seems really really good for raids. I'm thinking encounters like Shriekwing, or Huntsman if you're tanking the boss, Hungry and Destroyer, Sludge Fist 2. I know we gotta consider the conduit slots and other traits on Korain, but on its own, this is a really, really strong trait if you can avoid moving. Finally, we get to Draven of the Venthyr. Hold Your Ground is a stamina and healing buff that you get if you stand still for 4 seconds and persists for another 6 seconds after moving. This is mostly a tanking trait and not quite as good as Hold the Line, but hey, it can't be too upset about more stamina. Superior Tactics gives a 10% additional crit chance after dispelling an ally or interrupting an enemy and has a 30 second cooldown. The short cooldown mix is pretty reliable when you know that you are doing the interrupts or the cleanses, so you can with some effort line this up with other buffs and cooldowns for maximum effect. And Built for War gives a 4% main stat buff when you're at high health but it falls off when you dip too low. So this is more or less a trait for non-tanks, and it's a nice throughput increase that mostly depends on your healers or, you know, you just not standing in stiff. Looks like that's it for week 12 of Shadowlands. I hope that this coverage was useful, and if so, like the video. Share it with others, and, uh, you know, don't forget to subscribe for more of this and all things Warcraft. We'll see you next time, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.